the beginning of the year, we have been talking about redigging, repossessing. And many a times, whenever you find the word re, it, 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 it comes of two words, repossess, redig, return, you know, rehabilitate, all that. There is a, re, a, a redoing of something. And this morning, I want us to do one more redoing. But today, I want us to return to Bethel. Tell your neighbor, we are returning to Bethel. Bethel means the house of God. So we are returning to the house of God. You are in the house of God, but I want you now to plug in until you get something from the house of God. You usually say we have come for a service. Yes, may your heart be serviced this morning. May your body be serviced this morning because you have come to the house of God. And this morning, I want us to remind ourselves of the place where we first met God. I am so happy that we have just finished with the song, At the Cross, At the Cross, where I first saw the right. And this morning, I'm talking about going back to that place where we met God. The place where God first became so real to you. And therefore, for the next few minutes, I want us to make a very brief trip. And I want to ask you a few questions. Has there ever been a time when you love Jesus more than you love him right now? Has there ever been time when you are more excited about the things of God than you are today? Has there ever been a time when you are closer to God than you are this moment? That time when you felt so close, that time when you felt words could not come out, you felt like you would try to talk, you cry. You are feeling so loved and Jesus, you would feel Jesus so loving. But this morning, for whatever reason, you are not feeling that way. You are the person I'm talking to this morning. And I'm telling you, we want to go back to that place. And I have a wonderful promise for you from the word of God. James 4, 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hearts, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and moan and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to groom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. This morning there is hope in the house of God. You are feeling that way in this season where environment is so challenging, the economy is challenging. I have got good news. It doesn't matter how, how they are. Humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. That is a promise for you. I pray that it's only the body which is cold. The heart is warm, and therefore, and the mouth can speak, and therefore you can say amen. amen. Can we agree? Yes. Yeah, yeah. We have to ex celebrate and be joyous that you are in the house of the, you are in the right place. Amen. You may be like Joseph, Jacob. You know the Lord. You've come to know him personally, but somewhere along the way, you lost the joy of salvation. There is no excitement for the things of God. There is no desire to worship God like there once was. There is no desire to be on time. There is no desire, you know, you are know, not foreign. You have only back, back one step, but backwards. Eh? This morning, I want us to take a few steps forward as we go back to Bethel this morning. Bible reading is a thing of the past. Yeah, and you can or you may not. Sharing Jesus is only a memory of long ago. And what you need today is what Jacob needed in that day. Your faith rejuvenated and your family reclaimed for God. And it is normal. Life is full of ups and downs. And maybe you are there down. Never remain down. You should either be up or on your way up. You are either up or on your way up. Never allow yourself to be down. Amen? Tell your neighbor, I may not tell you exactly, but I'm, I, maybe I'm up or on my way up. 
ndejua kuna mtu ataki, anataka kusema dio sasa ako kule chini lakini siwe unajijua hata kuja kanisa umejikokota actually at some point you stayed your body mi naenda kanisa unifuate sawa sawa yani you are really, really tempted between two forces do i stay do i go for the second service but thank god that you made it and you are here and you are listening to me the way to go in the kingdom it's by force you confess it until it becomes part of your life it's time to go back to bethel the place where god was first so real in my life that place where things of god truly excited you and that's what i want to talk to you about today as we briefly look at the life of jacob and i want to start by reading genesis 35 verse 1 and 2 uh, that's where we'll end, but let's start there. Let's read together so that our mouths may be used to talking. Okay, let's read together. Then God said to Joseph, Hold it. Project for us, verse 1 again. Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there. And make an altar there for God. Who appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau, your brother? I don't know who has been your Esau. I don't know the things that have been chasing you. I don't know the things that have been harassing you. The things have, that have been pulling you down. But there is a call in the house of God this morning that we can go back there, dwell there, build an altar there, and then God will find us there. I pray that this morning you'll be so determined and tell God in your heart, I refuse to leave that door the way I came in. Because I came to your house, you must minister to me. You are his daughter, you are his son, you deserve it because you are in the house of God this morning. And very quickly, I want to remind ourselves who was Jacob. Number one, Genesis 25 verse 21. Genesis 25 verse 21. Rebecca, who was the wife to um, Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife. Because she was barren. And the Lord granted his plea, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Hold it. Re, uh, Jacob was answered prayer. And it is so encouraging. This time round, Rebekah did not go to the bishop. Rebekah did not go to the pastor. Rebecca went to her husband and asked the husband, can you lay your hands on me and pray for me? I want a baby. And you know what? The Bible says God answered that prayer. And I want to talk to the couples in the house this morning. Even before you go out there, and I'm not saying it's wrong, it's, it's good. But also, I want you to recognize that anointing. Ask your husband to pray for you. Ask your wife to pray for you. Banas ifiwe. So, as we look briefly at the life of Jacob, I want you to know he was an answer to prayer. He and his brother Esau, they were twins. This couple had no children. But when Isaac prayed for Rebecca, God honored that prayer. And to the husbands in the house, God honors your prayer. Be brave and pray for your children. Pray for your wives. Intercede for them. God is waiting for you. Born as if he will. Number two, another point about Jacob. He grew up as a favorite of his mother, Rebecca. I don't know whether it was positive or negative, but that's what the Bible says, that she, he was a favorite. He liked hanging around his mother. And there's nothing wrong in being close to your mother. I encourage you to be close to your mothers. And if your mothers have rested like mine, in the kingdom there are so many mothers. Look around for mothers where you can hang around and you'll be blessed. 
Number three about Jacob. It's so unfortunate that he was an answer to prayer. He was a favorite of his mother. But as he grew up, he became a pro, what I would call a professional pro, possessor of other people's things. He just decided to become a professional, as a planter, a cornerman. Yet a wife of a pastor answered prayer. But as he was growing up, I don't know where he, keep, he picked the traits. But he just decided to become a professional possessor of other people's things. I pray that we don't have them this, in the house this morning. Number one, he took his brother's Esau's birthright and blessing. In Genesis 25, verse 29 and 34, ah, gone. Yours, are, yours is on. Mine has gone, but this one is on. This is, maybe you can project it for us. Let's read together. Now Jacob cooked. Can you project this in NLT, please? One day when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau arrived home from the wilderness exhausted and hungry. Esau said to Jacob, I am starved. Give me some of that lead stew. This is how Esau got his other name, Edom, which means red. All right, Jacob replied, but trade me your rights as the firstborn son. I want you to mark it there. Rook, I am dying of starvation, said Esau. What good is my birthright to me now? But Jacob said, you must first swear that your birthright is mine. So Esau saw an oath, thereby selling all his rights as the firstborn to his brother Jacob. A professional, an opportunist. Just because your brother is hungry, you tell him to swear that he is giving you everything that belongs to him. A firstborn birthright. A professional, you are an opportunist. And imagine it happened. And as if that was not enough. Remember I told you earlier alone, he was a favorite of his mother. I don't know why they, they, they hanged out and you maybe they became so close. Because the Bible says that Esau used to like to go to the forest, to hunt. And in Genesis 27, together with the mother again, they had a plan. The Bible says that the, the, uh, the wife of Ahad, maybe you can project for us Genesis 27, and we are going to read verse 11. Or should we start from verse 7? This is a story where the mother, the Rebecca, she overheard a conversation between Isaac and his son, firstborn son, Esau, that he should go and look and hunt and bring him so that he may receive the blessing. And when the mother heard, they decided to hatch a plan with the son, Jacob. And it was so intentional. Um that Re Rebecca was so determined to convince he had a, a plan. He had uh, the dressing. He offered, she offered how to, to prepare the meal the way Isaac loved. The Bible says that Isaac was very old and he could not see. And maybe let's re hear a bit of the conversation now starting from verse 11. This is a conversation between Jacob and the mother. Let's read together. And Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, Look, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I'm a smooth-skinned man. Perhaps my father will feel me, and I shall seem to be a deceiver to him, and I shall bring a curse on myself and not a blessing. 
But his mother said to him, let your curse be on me, my son. Only obey my voice and go get them for me. And he went and got them and brought them to his mother. And his mother made savory food such as his father loved. Then Rebecca took the choice clothes of her elder son and so, which were with her in the house, and put them on Jacob, her younger son. And she put the skins of the kids of the goats on his hands and on the smooth part of his neck. Then she gave the savory food and the bread which she had prepared into the heart of her son Jacob. So he went to his father and said, My father, and he said, Here I am. Who are you, my son? Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done just as you told me. Please arise, sit, and eat of my game that you so may bless me. Hold it there. It was so intentional. He had the audacity to go and tell his father, I am your son Esau. And I'm imagining there was a lot of pretense as he was trying to imitate how the brother speaks. And imagine it worked. And this was with the help of the mother. And I want to speak to the mothers in the house. You know the power of the tongue. Rebecca had the audacity. Rachel, she had the audacity of telling the son, let that curse be on me. Is it a wonder that she, she died on the way when they were going back to Bethel? Is it a wonder? And Jacob, remember I told, and we are talking about Jacob. Our subject today is Jacob. He was so intentional in trying to cover up. So through that way, hatching the plan with the mother, she was, he was, Jacob was again able to take the blessing of his brother. Verse 35. Now I want to fast forward. Now, now Esau comes, prepares the food, and takes to the father. But the father has already eaten and blessed Jacob. And now from verse 35, we can pick the conversation. Remember I said he was a professional in taking other people's things. And this was the confession of his father. Verse 35. But he said, your brother came with the deceit and has taken away your blessing. And Nessa said, is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and now he has taken away my blessing. And he said, have you not reserved a blessing for me? The father felt so bad that he had been cheated. And he had already done things which he could not undo. He had already blessed. Never mind, maybe next time you can go and follow up the story. Because by the grace of God, when Esau insisted whether he had left one more blessing, he told him, the day you'll be tired, you will break the yoke. And sure enough, towards the end of, the, of Genesis 35, uh, from Genesis 30 to 35, you realize even Esau was blessed. He was so much blessed that when Jacob wanted to go back and wanted to go and give him some of his frocks and with the gifts, he said, keep them. The Lord has blessed me. I have enough. I am here this morning to tell you there is hope in the house of God. No wonder the call, we let's go back to Bethel. There is hope. Even when everybody think that they have taken everything. You know, in my, in my mother tongue, there is a saying in central, um, in central Kenya. That Nairobi was divided when we were asleep. Nairobi yaga niro toro. That Nairobi was divided. I am here and I have got good news. You are sure nobody can take it. You can claim it. Because you are a son in your own right. 
Nobody should write to you that Zimama has been taken. There is a plot for you. I like what one brother told us when this church was very young. And the plots were going higher and higher. That time when you are told now it has content to a million, it was not achievable. That was very expensive. We could not afford. But one brother who was an elder in this church, I remember him telling the bishop, Bishop, don't you worry. Even if it will cost a million, when my time come, God will provide the million and I'll have the plot in Zimmerman. I am here to tell you this morning, in case they have been telling you that the blessings have all been taken, yours are in your father's house and you can claim them in Jesus' name. And it is after this brother, when now Jacob realized the father has known that he has lied to him, the brother was so angry until both he, Jacob, and the mother got so worried and intimidated. And again, the mother hatched another plan and acted that he wanted Jacob to go and look for a wife. But he was not going for the wife. Actually, in the Bible, I, I tried to look in different versions. And there was a certain version which says, Jacob runs away from his brother. But according to the mother, he was going to look for a wife. Never mind, he was running away, but he also got a wife along the way. Sawa, sawa. Jacob runs away from his angry brother. Genesis 28, 10 to 22, we read very fast. Now Jacob went out from Beersheba and went to Ad Haran. So he came. Ah, I thought you were reading together. Oh, yeah. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head and he lay down in that place. Hold it. He came from a very comfortable house. And this is how sin does. Now he's all alone somewhere. It is, has become dark. He had to spend the night here. The best he could afford was a stone as a pillow. Let's continue. Then he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie, I will give you and your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south, and in you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you, you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you I have done what I have spoken. Hold it there. He's running away. He has done a lot of mess. Imagine the kind of mess he has done to their small family, a family of four. We have an angry brother, a frustrated mother who has been separated from his favorite son, and a disappointed father. And now he's all alone in the middle of nowhere, in the desert. But in that place, the Lord appeared to him. I am here to encourage somebody this morning. It doesn't matter where you are. The Lord is where you are. You can plug in. You can draw life. You can tell God I am back and I want to be recharged. He got so many promises. Verse 16. Then Jacob, Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate to heaven. Then Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head, set it up as a pillar, and poured oil on top of it. And he called the name of the place Bethel, 
but the name of that city had been loose previously. Then Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me and keep me, the th I want you to remind, to remember the promises God has just given in the previous verses. Jacob repeated the same promises. And now he's so doubtful, maybe because he knows about his past, he's telling God, if, you know when God says he do, you do, it's not an if, it is you believe it and receive it. But Jacob decided to put a condition. If you will do this, just what he has been told that he will do. The promises were, the promises God promised were, his presence, I'll be with you, his protection, and his provision. The very same things are the ones, now Jacob is putting uh, an if. If God, you will do this, a condition, then I will. This morning, I pray that you are not put giving God conditions. That I will come to the house of God. I will do this. I will live as a Christian if you first of all do this, this, and this. I want to encourage you this morning. The covenant keeping God, we have just sung this morning. That God is a covenant keeping God. When he promises, he delivers. And very soon, we are going to see that he delivered. God appeared to Jacob in the worst, least expected place, in the desert at his lowest. This reminds me what the Bible says, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus did not save you because you were too good. God did not find you because you are better than the others. It is by the grace of God. No wonder you can never earn the grace of God. It has to be by grace every day. Therefore, stop giving God conditions. If he has said it, tell him, I receive it. I believe it. And if it be like you say, like that man who said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. May that become your portion. That you will take God as his word. And no, there won't come there will never come one day when you will deserve God's blessings. Remember what we have just heard. It was at his lowest. He was with no one. There was no brother. There was no sister. There was no father. And at that point, God shows up and introduces himself. And God says, I'm the Lord God of your father and your grandfather, and you are a mine too. This morning, I want to tell you that God takes a lot of pride in you. You are his son, and he wants to do you good. If only you can believe. He reminded Jacob that he was still a partaker of the inheritance of his father and his grandfather, Abraham. God also confirmed the promise he had made to Abraham and Isaac of the, how this, he will become a big nation, like the dust of the earth. And you know what? Maybe you are looking at your surrounding and you are wondering, now how? In my account, I've got only 500 shillings. At this time when God is making this promise, Abraham had only one legitimate son. Isaac had two, but with God, all things are possible. With God, nothing is impossible. And finally, God made a promise that he would always be with him wherever he goes. He will see him wherever he is going. And I will bring you back. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And finally, he still, even where he was going, even after all the promises and the affirmation, when he got wherever he was going, he landed in, in his father-in-law's house, Reban. He still decided to call him again. That's why I'm telling you, well, that was his character. Until the day when he met one man 
who put him down and asked him, what is your name? When his name was changed, his life turned around. I pray that this morning you will have a turning point. And finally, we go back to where we started in Genesis 35. You can read that story of how he called his father-in-law uh, in Genesis chapter 30 and from verse 41 to 43. Actually, 43 says, as a result, Jacob became very wealthy with large flocks of sheep and goats, female and male, servants and many camels and donkeys. Actually, the Bible says he, became, he had more than he, the owner. The owner was Laban. Now he has employed you, but he also met his match. Never mind the way his behavior costed him much. Number one, betrayal. He worked for one wife for 14 years. He found his match. He had enough share of his frustration. Another disappointment. His favorite, his mother. He never got to see the mother again. By the time they rounded back, he only got Isaac. And the Bible adds up in Genesis 35 that he was able at least to bury the father. He was separated with his loving mother for the rest of his life. Sin is very expensive. I pray that the Lord will help us to stop quoting sin. Let's go back to the house of God. As if working for 14 years was not enough. Genesis that one verse 6. Maybe you can project that one for us. Genesis that one Verse 6, I I've just told you that he met his match. The Bible says that he changed Jacob's salary ten times. Can you imagine having such an employer? Unamuka kesho anakwabia, 10,000. The following day anakwabia, 7,000. The following day anakwabia, 2,000. The the anaongeza anapungua, ten times. Can you imagine? He had enough share of his consequences. Ten times his salaries. And as I wind up, I want us to pick a few lessons. Remember we are talking about returning back to Bethel. Remember God introduced himself as the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and we all know after this incident, Later, in the later chapters, God has co continued introducing himself. Even Jacob entered there. The Bible says, I'm the Lord God, the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This con man still made it way that it is, we would want to be partakers. Yes, you may not have gone even to that extent. You can make it to be a son of covenant. And you are a son of covenant because of the blood of Jesus. So, lesson number one. Salvation is not inherited. Jacob was a con man and yet a son of Isaac and a grandson of Abraham. God will introduce himself as his, by his father's name and his grandfather's name. But in spite of all that, his family members had all sorts of idols. Salvation is personal responsibility. Believe in your heart and then confess Jesus is Lord. Follow him daily. Pursue to introduce your God to your children, to your family, and to your friends. Salvation is not inherited. Because at this point, Jacob was there, lukewarm. He knew about God. Why do I know he knows? When God appeared to him in the desert, the Bible says he took that stone, anointed it. He had, I think he had seen what his, his father and his grandfather maybe were doing or something like that. He had an idea. But he had not embraced this salvation for himself. That is why when God blessed him with a family, 
his family, his children. That's why in Genesis chapter 35 and verse 2, when God appeared to him and asked him to go back to Bethel, he knew the protocol. So he told his family. Can we read verse 2? 35 verse 2. He knew there was work to be done. And Jacob said to his household, and to all who are with him, put away the foreign gods that are among you. Purify yourself and change your garments. And the Lord is talking to us this morning. Put away those things that you know they keep him off. The things that grieve the Holy Spirit. Put them away. Let's go back to Bethel. Let's go back to the house of God where he can speak to us one more time. Could it be that the Lord has not been speaking to you? Because of what? Of the sins and the things you have hidden in your heart. On Friday, uh, our brother reminded us, Psalms 25, I think verse 14, maybe you can project it for us. Psalms 25 verse 14. It talks, it, the secret of the Lord is with those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Put it in NIV. The Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. Are you wondering why you are no longer hearing God? Are you wondering why God is not talking to you? Have you kept your part of bargain? Fearing the Lord, that he may confide in you, that he may give you his secrets. Jacob knew if they were going back to Bethel, then he and his family had, and he knew it. Actually, he continued. Let's read verse 3 of that verse. He, he became more of a, he became excited. He remembered that's where he found, he saw the right. It was at his cross. Then let us arise and go to Bethel. And I will make an altar there to God. Who answered me in the day of my distress and has been with me in the way which I have gone. Verse 4. So they gave Jacob all the foreign gods, which were in their hands, and the earrings which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under the terebinth tree, which was by Shechem. And they journeyed, and the teller of God was upon the cities that were all around them, and they did not pursue the sons of Jacob. God kept all the promises. He had promised him that he will bless him. He will increase him. Now he's talking, he came alone. You remember that night? He was all alone in the night. When he's going back, he has a household. He had actually 12 sons. He had much frogs, never mind how he got them. But he was so rich. He was going back full. And the Lord made sure he also kept the promise of protection. The Bible says that the city surrounding them feared them. Nobody asked them a question. I want to tell you we serve a covenant-keeping God. The promises that God has given you, he will fulfill them. And Jacob, over time, and by this time it was actually over 20 years, he would look back and give a testimony. He has watched over me. Lesson number two, trust God and his promises. Trust God and his promises. Jacob was still not sure of his faith in God. When God appeared to him in a dream, he still did not believe. Instead, he gave God conditions. When I see, I will believe. Faith is an assurance of things hoped for. This morning, even if you have been praying and you have not seen, gotten the answer. Tell God I'm still waiting. I believe. Faith is an assurance of things hoped for. What are you hoping for? What are you expecting from God? It may not have come, but it will come because God is faithful. Not because you are faithful, but because God is faithful. Lesson number three. God never gives up on us. God will never give up on you. He allows us to go through our mess, but allows on time to rescue us once we cooperate. Jacob cooperated and agreed to go back to Bethel. And it is on, on his way back to Bethel, 
he will meet God another, a second time, where he will wrestle with him and tell him, I am not leaving you until you bless me. It is after he cooperated that he was blessed and changed his name. Once you cooperate, starting with believing, God never gives up on us. And lesson number four, when we allow God to lead, we get rest. How do I know that he got rest? He got rest because if you can read that story, when he got nearer to his motherland, or is it fatherland, he was fearing his angry brother. You remember I told you he was running away from the brother? And he was sending emissaries with the gifts to try and uh, appease his brother. But Esau gave back a reply that he's no longer bitter. Jacob had rest. When you allow the good shepherd to lead you, he will lead you to places of rest. Are you feeling disturbed this morning? Can you allow the good shepherd to lead you into the green pastures? Just allow him to lead you. When Jacob obeyed to go back to Bethel, he was restored. He got the courage to wrestle with God until his name was changed and finally settled back to his father's land. In the house of God, you are equipped to fight for your inheritance because our weapons are strong to the pulling down of strongholds. This morning, I don't know where you are. Maybe you, you are in a mess. And the mess you are in, for sure you know you are part of the making. It doesn't matter whether you are in a self-made mess, people-made mess, devil-made mess, all you need to do is to tell yourself, I'm going back to the house of God. You will never deserve the grace of God. And God is willing to have you back. God is willing to clear your mess. God is willing to hold your hand and start enjoying the promises. Because his promises are yea and amen. So once again, I want to ask you. Could you be on the run? You know where you are. It is because of your disobedience. Return to Bethel, the house of God. A place of forgiveness, restoration, and a place of a second chance. Go back and be recharged. You are the only one who knows where you are. The Lord also knows where you are. Even in the desert, he is present. He was present for Jacob. Even when he appeared a second time, it was still on his way back. This morning, there is hope because you have come back to the house of God. And you can go back and repair your relationship with God. The Bible says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. This morning, are you willing to take responsibility of the your contribution to the place where you are this morning. For sure you know it has backfired. Maybe you had decided to be a con man like Jacob. But this morning there is hope in the house of God. I told you earlier, these days we refer to our God as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. How did Jacob connect? He agreed to go back to Bethel. Bethel, the house of God. And I want to ask you, are you willing to go back? Are you ready? The Savior is waiting. Narudi, Narudi, Guto Kabali. Unikari bise bana narudi 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 kutoka bali sasa.
I don't know where you want to go back, in which area, maybe in your prayer life, in your Bible leading life, in your fellowship, in your service to God. I don't know where, in which area you are telling God you are coming back. I would want to pray for you. If you want me to be, make that prayer on together and agree together, I want you to lift up your hand even as we pray together. Naludi, Naludi. Father, you have heard the confession of your sons and daughters this morning. I want to thank you, Lord, because you are very personal. You can see in which area, you can see in the area we are crying to you that you may receive us. As we come back to your house, as we come back to Bethel, as we come back to the place where we encountered you and felt you and really felt blessed. Yes, Lord, I pray that you would receive your sons and daughters this morning. They are taking responsibilities and that's why our hearts are up, oh Lord, that today you may receive us, oh God. We know you are a covenant-keeping God and you are going to answer us even as we make that confession. May you cause us to be ensnared by our own confession this morning that today we are coming back in Jesus' name.